Welcome to the 4A podcast. It has been a division series for sure. My Dodgers, they sold. The Phillies, they upset. Let's go. Braves are out. Yankees win. Astros win. Let's break it down. How are we doing today, boys? Doing good. A lot of baseball to break down and a lot of stuff going on even right now in the MLB. A lot of questions to be answered. Uh, Stevs, what are you thinking? Uh, well, it's good to be here. Um, it was great divisional round i'm very excited to see how this championship series go yeah no um great division series uh hopefully an even better uh championship series and so for those of you who aren't familiar stevs this is his first episode uh stevs give us a brief introduction who's your favorite team and if you could have one player from the nationals all time be on your current team who would it be Kind of gave it away there. Favorite team is the Washington Nationals. And, uh, I mean, as our team's constructed right now, um, I think I, I probably want a, want a pitcher. I need someone to to uh, hold down the starting rotation because Patrick Corbin's definitely not going to do that. So I'd like to bring back Scherzer. Um, but my answer would be Trey Turner because of my uh, allegiance to Trey Turner as a as a fan. Well, one can respect that. Um, where do you guys want to start today? Do we want to start in the NL or are we want to start in the AL? AL? Let's start with the upsets. Let's start with the upsets. I want, I want to talk about the upsets first. All right, so to the National League we go. We're going to start it off here on the East Coast with the Phillies walking in to Truist Park and taking game one. They take game one. It's pretty convincing. They get to Freed. It is pretty one-sided. Uh, Zach Wheeler pitches well, offense goes well, Braves, you know, they can't really get it going. Game two, however, the Braves do get it going. They, you know, they win the game pretty convincingly, but then it goes to Philadelphia. When it gets to Philadelphia, it goes off the rails. Reese Hart, Reese Hoskins has the best bat flip since Jose Bautista in 2015. It's more of a bat slam than a flip. The crowd is doing the tomahawk chop. And you better win if you're doing that tomahawk chop. And they did that in game four quite convincingly. What are your guys' thoughts? Uh, well, uh, I'll, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. Um, so I, I through classes and everything, I was I was watching as many games as I could. And um, I I thought Spencer Strider was going to lock up the, the Phillies. I thought he was going to do it. I didn't think he was going to pitch deep into the game, not at all. But I thought it, for the three innings he was going to, and I have he was gonna he was gonna shut him down and Reese Hoskins and that absolute electric bat slam proved me wrong in that and it was it was just amazing to see this Phillies team that um has had has had struggles all season um really show out and and you could see the city of Philadelphia is fully behind the Phillies right now and it's it's great to see yeah um you know I'm 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 going to have to stop saying there's no chance, you know, a team wins in this game. Uh, I think I'm 0 for 2, and especially Phillies game one, when I said there is no chance they go into Atlanta against Max Freed in a big playoff game and win, they did just that. Um, yeah, I mean, dominated, kind of. Um, especially that game one. I, I think after that game one, people kind of had that thing, hey, this Phillies team is legit. They can beat anybody. They can go far. And they did have gone far. Yeah, I completely agree. Like, the Phillies, they had to rely on Nola and Wheeler. And Nola and Wheeler stepped up in games two and three. And Rachel Suarez did his job in game one. Like, Aaron Nola, like, crowd electric, does it at home. And they play well enough off they play great offense surprisingly we have everyone kind of step up Gene Segura got going the only people who really didn't have going were Castellanos and Kyle Schwarber well Castellanos had that big game was that one or game three where he had the three hits it was was game game, game one yeah it was game so besides game one Castellanos wasn't very present at the plate uh the pitching showed up the bullpen didn't absolutely you know blow the game like everyone thought it would and honestly good job Phillies like you, you, you stood up. Um, so I want to go over what, <laughs> what our predictions were last time. So Tom, 
<laughs> your pick was Austin Riley and the Braves winning this. Austin Riley in the series batted at 067, 125, 192. Your thoughts? I mean, this is a pretty common theme in the Braves lineup during this whole series. They were pretty dormant. Uh, and can you guys hear me? Just to double check. Yeah, you you're good. Right? You're good. Yeah, this lineup, this whole lineup was pretty dormant. It was, I mean, I don't think you could have picked anyone on the Braves to actually do well because there wasn't that many stars. Um, I know there was a couple of uh, great hits in game two for them, but other than that, they were really just dominated by the Phillies pitching. Uh, it was kind of embarrassing. Uh, I understand Austin Riley's a streaky guy. Uh, I guess he's got more time. He's got more time in the future to work on that. Uh, he's definitely going to be back in the playoff position again next year. So um, he'll, he'll be adjusting, but. I guess he's not a playoff performer yet. And then Aiden, you went with Michael Harris. Also, <laughs> bad line. 071, 071, 143 for his slash line. He went one for 14. He let up an inside the park home run. Counted out Ronald Acuna probably, you know, could have been there to back him up. But Michael Harris didn't make the plays that we thought he would. What do you think? No. Um strong, strong rookie season. Um, top three in NL rookie of the year, most likely. Um, young, you know, um, amazing talent, but young. Um, like Tom said, he'll be back. Hopefully, he can be better, you know. And I just, he just has to work out his his kinks and you know the offense and and get back to it next year. Yeah, he'll be back. It'll be fine. It's just. That was a really disappointing showing from the Braves offense. And I had Dansby Swanson, who was quite literally one of the worst hitters on the team. He had seven strikeouts and 17 plate appearances. He did have the best slash line of any of our three, but none of us get points here. We've all had the Braves winning, and we all had horrible picks. Uh, it hurts me inside because my pick that I was going to go with was Travis Darno, who had a solid series for himself, but chose wrong. No points on the board. Stavs, what do you think about this series? So, so personally, if, if I were to, if I were, if I were there last episode, I would, I would have went with the Braves and I probably would have picked, I probably would have been right there with you and, and had Dansby being the, the guy and the X factor as he is the upcoming free agent. And uh, he kind of wanted, he, he needed to show out in my opinion. Um, and that's a whole nother thing with his free agency. Um, but it, it, it was, it was it was rough to see the Braves go out there and their bats were just absolutely there were there were holes in the bats all the whole series. Yeah, and all in all, the Phillies beat the Braves pretty handedly. There's not much question whether who showed up for the series and who didn't. Uh, it does beg the question, which I think we'll talk about a little bit later: the wild card being five games, having the five day break for the people who had the bye. But at the end, you still got to show up and play baseball, and that's not what the Braves or the Dodgers did for that matter. Your Dodgers, your 111-win Dodgers losing in four games in San Diego. Oof. The Dodgers hit starting pitching pretty well, to be honest. They got Clevenger early in game one. Game two, they got through. I think they was Darvish line was like five and a third, four earned, something like that. They hit Darvish well. They struggled a bit with Snell and Musgrove, but at the end of the day, the story of this series was the Padres' bullpen. They were fantastic. They locked it down at the end, and the Dodgers' offense couldn't really get going. What do you guys think? Yeah, no. Um, I I mean, that's going to be the story of the Padres if they can continue this you know, postseason run of <laughs> upsetting. Um, nobody thought they'd beat the Mets. Nobody thought they'd beat the Dodgers. Um, now they have the Phillies, who – who's the underdog in that one? I mean, I think it's a pretty um, equal series coming up. But, yeah, um, bullpen. If they keep up the bullpen um, consistency, then, I mean, they can make it all the way. Um, offense can be, you know – if they can get behind, if they can, the fans can get behind them, you know, these home games and that offense can be scary. But if, you know, if not, they can be a little streaky. So, I mean, if, I think if they can score four or five runs, I mean, I think you have a 70, 80% chance of winning the game with the way the pitching has been. 
And so, for reference, the Padres won game two, three, and four. We saw the Dodgers win game one. And personally, I was like, all right, it's 2020 again. The Dodgers are taking two and three. And boy, oh boy, did that not happen. We all had the Dodgers winning this series. Tom, you had the best pick of the series. You had Freddie Freeman. He hit three, 357, 500. 1.286. He's definitely getting two points on that board for you. Do you think Freddie Freeman was the only Dodgers offense this series, or do you think that there were other contributing parts? I mean, this guy seemed to be on base every time I checked the game. Uh, I mean, he just, he was getting on base more than everyone else on the team. I mean, this is, this is an offense that completely disappeared just like Braves. Um, They were getting on base more, but, the problem was scoring those runners on base. Uh, this team left a ton of runners on base this series, so it's it's a little bit disappointing. Um, I, I won't say it's one it's it's one player that carried the whole team. I would say it's just clutch hitting from the Dodgers. It just was not there. Um, hitting with runners in scoring position was just not something they were good at this series, and that was something they were good at the whole season. So when you when you don't have run when you don't score the runners on base, you're not going to win the game. So yeah, that's completely fair. Like. In the Dodgers offense, it was pretty good throughout the year, but the pitching was what was there. And that kind of proved again this year. The pitching was fine. It was nothing spectacular, but the offense didn't show up and you need run support. Um, Aiden, you had Will Smith. He was bad. His OP, his on-base percentage was lower than his batting average. Um, pretty much comes down to that. Uh, he caught okay. He caught all four games. Wasn't yeah, really no, that big really. Um, no, um, I think if you look at it, I mean, everybody had to contribute a bit, you know, to especially against the Padres pitching, um, to come out with the series win. They didn't, um, <laughs> bad pick, um, <clears throat> making a lot of those, but yeah, no, bad pick, um. But real quick, if we can bring up the uh, situation in Game 5 of taking out the Dodgers taking out their starter earlier. The Game 4. Game 4, sorry. Yeah, I've taken taking him out early. Thoughts on that? I just think the issue, I'm not putting this solely on one thing. The Dodgers didn't show up to play this year's, and it's pretty evident. The one thing that really stood out was Dave Roberts' poor management skills. Cody Bellinger didn't play two of the games this series. I know Cody Bellinger has been piss poor in the regular season over the past three years, but he's shown up to play every October. You have to bet on the back of the baseball card. That's what Dave Roberts says, why he's in the lineup every single day. So put him in the lineup in the postseason when he's been doing okay. You pull Tyler Anderson in game four. He's at 86 pitches through five innings. The Padres cannot touch him. The Padres haven't touched him all year. Don't take that that way. The Padres can't hit Tyler Anderson, and you have to win this game. You take out the thing that's shutting their offense down. That's poor managing. That's not how you win in October. The Dodgers, honestly, at this point, I'm not going to have them winning World Series in any prediction. They're going to look fantastic on paper. They're going to be great in the regular season. They're going to be number one in every power ranking. And then we get to the postseason, and they're going to lose to some team that doesn't deserve to be there with them, but they will play better than the Dodgers. I mean, I I just – I've been saying this for a while, but Davis is not – he's definitely glorified with the team that's around that sets surrounding him. If he, if he was managing a team that didn't have the, the sheer star power that the Dodgers had, it, it's not going to be the same situation. He's going to maybe win 50 games, but he, this, this Dodgers team, you could, you could put no one a head coach and they'd still win a hundred games. It, it's not like the coaching position is that big of a deal, but it can hurt them at the end of the day. Um, and it did in the postseason. They, they need to start considering looking for a new coach. I think. No, they, he's managing 2023, which means they aren't winning in 2023. Um, I had Mookie Betts, Aggressively average series, not really anything there. It, I, I'm disappointed, but I'm not surprised. Like the Padres looked really good in the wild card, and it would have taken the Dodgers that finished off the season, not the Dodgers after that five day break. 
Yeah, I, I would say nothing was there wasn't there wasn't a better feeling in the world than waking up to the news that the Dodgers have choked the lead. I went to bed with the Dodgers winning. I thought the game was over. I was exhausted, so I went to bed and woke up to the news that the Padres came back after the Dodgers blew another lead, and it was just the greatest news as a Giants fan. Uh, I'm sneaking that in there. Uh, we're gonna ignore the the Giants' current uh, the season we just had. Um, that's not something that's important. Uh, sometimes I like looking back a little too far, but uh, 2010, 2012, and 2014 were some good years, um, and we're gonna we're gonna be back, you know, um, next year. We always have next year, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, you're telling yourself the same thing, Brad. But you know, am you know, I though at this point? No. We have, similar. We, have, we have something similar. You know what? Both the Giants and the Dodgers are watching the NLCS from the couch. So, at the end of the day, you know, it, it's yeah. No, that's fair. I think we'll definitely talk about like you know how the season went for some teams and what we think about their future in the off season when we do our you know our review of the season and we get towards the spring and we talk about our profiles and projections but we have talked about teams that are still in this i'm going to go with the astros mariners first because we had the other series and tonight we're recording us uh we're recording this on tuesday evening so the yankees guardian series just finished about three hours ago so we're going to start with houston versus seattle it was a really close like well-fought series like no game was a blowout by any means it may on paper, if you look, Houston wins 3 0. All right, Houston dominated that series. The Mariners had no chance. Mariners had every chance in every game. Game one, neither starter showed up. Like Justin Verlander was horrible. Actually, like, let me retract. Logan Gibbert was fine. He was fine. And then the bullpen blew it. <sighs> then they decided to put in. Robbie Ray against Jordan Alvarez. First pitch, fastball. You know, he takes it, or he whiffs on it, correct? I believe he whiffs. You don't make that pitch twice to Jordan Alvarez. It's a fastball in the heart of the plate. He doesn't miss those. He throws another one. It's in the bleachers. Astros 1-0. You go to game two. The Astros win. Luis Castillo pitched well. Jordan Alvarez took a sinker that was two balls outside of the strike zone and put it in the Crawford boxes. Framber Valdez threw okay. Luis Castillo pitched great until that point. He still went seven innings, pitched three earned. It's just the Astros will not quit until the game is over. And I don't think the Mariners are ready for that. And I personally don't think Scott Service is a good postseason manager. What are your guys' thoughts? Um... That you go first. I'll go first. Yeah. Um. I I definitely think that the. I I don't know if 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 he's the manager that will will bring the Mariners to the promised land. Um. I definitely don't know that, but I think for the time being he's the guy they have, and I think he's he does a good job at at, at what he can do. Right. It, he came into this series. There wasn't a lot, a very high expectation for the Mariners to come in and, and win out. It was the Astros. Astros are a, a heavyweight. And, but the Mariners came out and they fought honestly harder than I think any other team outside of the Astros fought in their series. And, and they went down, they went down 3 0, right? And it was, and it, it's a sweep on paper and it doesn't look very good. But you have, uh, it was a good game. You were winning game one. You should have won game one, and Robbie Ray blew, blew it. Game two, it was a good, it was a good hard fought game. That was a game you lost. And game three was a absolute uh, amazing game to watch in eighteen innings of just pure pitching. Um, and it was just, it, it was, it's just hard to see the Mariners go in this way. But it's, it's the game of baseball, right? And then, yeah, sorry, you got this. But in here, I want to say, Scott Service is. I don't. I think it's too early to judge him. This is a team that hasn't been back to the playoffs in God knows how long. I. It's. He's new to this, and I think that. And I agree with what you said, Brad. Uh, you see three on, you think it's over. I think game one. I. I think I, I truly believe this. If, if the Mariners didn't allow that home run to Jordan Alvarez, the momentum would not have shifted, and I believe that the Mariners would have pulled through because every single game was winnable 
from the Astros. And I can say it for any team, but it was really winnable for this team. I mean, you go up and you have nine extra innings to hit a walk-off home run or any any RBIs, and you just don't capitalize on that. And it's just like, I don't know. And especially in such a game something that long, I don't know how I don't know how either offense took so long to actually get around the bases, especially considering how deep into the bullpen they were getting. Um, but it was definitely like it was a good game. But I definitely thought that um, the Mariners could have capitalized the nine extra innings they had to score. Yeah, and that brings us to our marathon that we call Game Three. I tuned in in the sixth inning, and I was like, okay, you know, it's going to be exciting. We're going to get to the ninth inning, and there's going to be some 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 dramatic and then i was like oh we're going to the 10th there's gonna be some dramatic ah we're going to the 11th there's gonna be some dramatic and then it just kept going and going and going and there comes a certain point where i wanted that ghost runner to be on i think the ghost runner being on right after an inning start or after after extra inning starts not that great like 10th maybe 11th it shouldn't be a ghost runner, but if we're pushing 12, 13 innings, that becomes less entertaining for the baseball fan, and you lose viewership. You want people to be engaged in the postseason. And unless you were a Seattle or Houston fan, it was very difficult to watch that game. Ultimately, 18th inning, Jeremy Pena, solo home run. That's all it needed it was a 1-0 final in 18 innings. And one of the most interesting things that they did mention on the broadcast is – Every tie game that's gone to the 18th inning, there's been a home run in the 18th inning. So I think that's for postseason play, but still pretty interesting. Astros took in three. Are we surprised? Not surprised, but Not um, I would have thought that the Mariners would have taken one, and I think that would have been game one, but – I that the, the, the game three is the equivalent of being shut out twice. That is that is quite embarrassing for a friend. Like you know, you get you can't get eighteen innings straight. I think that's something that's difficult to do. The bats yeah. were not there that day. No, and so Aiden, your guy was Jose Altuve, and then he went O for seventeen with. <laughs> He went 0 for 17 with six Ks. And Tom, your guy was Justin Verlander. <laughs> oh, I remember guessing that and then watching the first game in horror. But I was ultimately happy, but I ended up getting in a lose-lose situation because not only did Verlander pitch bad, but the Astros ended up winning that game somehow. So it was, it was the biggest loss for me personally. I, I did not. I did not enjoy watching the end of game one. Um, definitely frustrating. That's a zero points for me. Actually, at one point. Yeah, yeah one point for getting it right. Should be a negative one. Nope. Yeah, honestly. Nope. Yeah, 13.50 ERA, 10 hits and in four innings. Jesus. That's just not Verlander. Like, I don't know. It's I, not. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what was going on with him in game one, but let's hope he shows out against the Yankees because they're going to need him. Yeah, for real. Um, I had Christian Javier, but I did mention Jordan Alvarez a lot. I was saying he's one of my two guys. Are we giving Brad a single point for that or no? Point, yeah. Because he mm-hmm. he's deserving he, of two, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It was your backup. Yeah, that makes sense. Give him one. Yeah. Okay, and for future, I will yeah. clarify if it's only one. Like there can only be one person. Yes. Yeah. And then. As you mentioned, the Astros will be playing your New York Yankees as Aiden celebrates in his vignette. Um, no one likes the Yankees. No one wanted the Yankees to win, and the Yankees won. It was a series, good definitely. Series. Um, you know, Cleveland looked pretty good. By all things considered, Cleveland looked good for themselves. You know, they had some momentum at points. Uh, they took They took one in the Bronx. They took one in Cleveland. And it was supposed to be a game five on Monday night, which got rained out, pushed it to a game five today, Tuesday, where the Yankees ultimately won. Last night, interesting story by Eduardo Perez. After the Guardians left Yankee Stadium after the game was canceled, they went to go to their hotel. Their rooms, their hotel was overbooked, so they had to go find a different hotel. 
they couldn't find a hotel that would fit the entire team. So they had to stay across the city split into two groups. That's a good way to treat your opposition, right? That's just Yankees. That's just that Yankees. Yeah. Getting, I, mean, I, I don't have much respect for the franchise or the fans or anything in total. I just, I don't know if anyone actually likes the Yankees that doesn't actually root for the Yankees. It's, it was the worst case scenario. I was rooting for Cleveland. I was rooting for David versus Goliath. I really did not want to see the Yankees come out on top, but watching today in class was probably the most painful thing. Just checking up on the scores and seeing the score difference increasing every time I checked, it was a little, it was a little bit discouraging, but yeah. And you have to think at some point MLB just wanted the Yankees and obviously they're not going to in like the forefront, like here, they're not going to be like, hey, yeah, we want the Yankees, but you know, the yeah. money's in New York versus Houston for the eight, the, for the nth time. Yeah. And honestly, we all knew deep in our, like d- deep down, we knew the Yankees were going to win. Tom and I really hope that Cleveland are going to win. Like there was a genuine case for it. Cleveland had to play to their complete strengths, which was limiting offense for the Yankees. And when the Yankees scored five or more, they won. So, surprise. Tom, who was your guy? Was it Oscar Gonzalez? I don't remember. It was Kyle Higashioka. That was Aiden. Oh. That was Aiden. That was Aiden. That was you, Aiden? Yeah. That's yeah, my that bad. I have me. that marked down incorrectly. Yeah. No, that was me. Okay, then, Tom, your guy was yeah, Emmanuel Classe. Lights out in his appearance, but he, uh, he ultimately... went two and a third. Yeah, not as many, not as many close scenarios as I would have thought. Um, honestly, I don't know what the idea was. I think even in losing situations, you could have put him in just to eat innings. Um, especially today, in a game where you needed, he did go down- today. I know, but I, I was saying earlier before they were down by so many runs. I wouldn't say to open with him, but I don't. I don't like the idea of starting Savali. Um, no. I think we'll talk about that, Maybe. are we? No, that should have been Shane Bieber. Yeah, like, it should have been. been. Tito's quoted like saying that he wanted to protect his. He's trying to protect his guy, but if it, your season's on the line, you have to win today. You go with your guy. You have to. Yeah. Like, the Yankees went with Cortez on short rest. Why didn't? Why didn't Tito do it with Bieber? I don't know. I mean, I I don't even think you would need him to go more than three innings, maybe three or four innings. And then you got the dominant bullpen that's been showing up every time. And it would have limited them a lot more than Savali starting this game. And they did not have the offensive power today. Um, but I, I will say a lot of it goes into momentum. I think the fact that they're down early definitely did not help the bats. Yeah. And Stavs, where do you stand on this series? Um, I, I definitely, obviously, I ever, I think the whole world outside of uh, part of New York wanted wanted uh, the Guardians to win, and it's just the only, the, in my opinion, the only you you root for, and on some teams you root for players, and for the Yankees, everyone's behind Aaron Judge and his historic season that he had, but you you want the Guardians to win, but but they're young, right? They have young guys like like McKenzie and and Oscar Gonzalez and some of these young names that are going to come out and they're going to be a threat uh, in the American League for years to come. And I think that they had a couple of the games that they lost, um, but definitely in game five, it's just, it was it was coming up all Yankees and and there was there was nothing they could do. Yeah. And so Aiden, welcome back. Kyle Hagashioka. Yeah. Um, you know, not my thought aspect. I mean, I think we made I think we all kind of made like, right? We all kind of not all of us, but me and you bad, we definitely kind of reached out more on our uh picks for the series. Um didn't hit once again. Um <laughs> Not a good division series for me, but you know it'll be it'll be interesting. Yeah, and so speaking of reaching out, my guy was this Waldo Cabrera. 
overall, his series wasn't great, but he took over game three. Where do we stand on that? Um, I think the pimp job carried that. That was one of the craziest pimp jobs I've seen. Um, honestly, I don't know how you can how you can argue against the fact that he probably earned you a point for that, if not yeah. two. Yeah, um, yeah, one one point. One point. One point. Yeah. No more than no more than one. Yeah. Yeah. So looking at that, I got to add up our totals here. So in the division series, I scored a whopping three points tied with Tom, who also scored three points. Oh, yeah. And Aiden, you scored two points. So with Stevs with zero points, Stevs, you got an opportunity to come back. But maybe you could just get our mystery selection for the championship series. So moving into the championship series, I had everyone send their pick for the San Diego versus Philadelphia series earlier today, just in case, you know, like we had any, like to prevent any bias going on from this game. Um, So let's start it off. What do we got? Like, I know we see the score right now. It's two zero. Bottom nine. I'll go on my pick. Very proud of my pick. I picked uh, Bryce Harper to hold on one moment. Right. Uh, at the moment, Manny Machado has flown out. There are two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Sorry, that is I'm correct. slightly behind. So, um, so I picked Bryce Harper. It was a safe pick. I didn't, I didn't want to pick a, a safe bet. I'm, I like being risky. I like picking weird picks like Emmanuel Class A. But Harper's got something in him right now. Um, he he clearly wants to win. Um, he got, <laughs> he's got that, you know. Um, but uh, I really, I really thought he was gonna keep it up. And tonight. As you might have seen, he has hit a home run. Um, and Aiden's pick, no, Stev's pick has also landed. Stev, you want to tell us about that? Yeah. Uh, so I, I have, I have the uh, farthest hit ball in uh, Peco Park in uh, Kyle Schwarber. Um, I, I think Schwarber has been that guy for Philadelphia. It's kind of been a been a spark plug for for their offense, and he's kind of um he he's just a guy everyone can kind of empathize with and like um and he was he was like that with the cubs he was like that with the nationals and and now he's he's here in philadelphia and he's he's back in the postseason i think he he's he's i think he's gonna have a big series against the, this padres pitching staff um and so you have the phillies winning that and i have the phillies winning in in six games and then Ian, where do you stand on all this yeah, um, I have pot one, Padres in six. Um, I think that pitching staff is going to be able to, uh, you know, get down on the hot Phillies. Um, and I have Josh Bell, who's at up the plate right now. At the plate, two outs, two on, two strikes. Hopefully he can get me a point in one swing. Yeah, so I have the Padres in seven, but here's my logic behind it, right? I've picked – the Mets and the Dodgers to beat the Padres. And I hate the Padres. So my logic is if I pick the Padres, they'll lose. But if they win, I get a point. Game. And there we see the Padres losing game one. Jose Alvarado strikes out Josh Bell. So the way I looked at this was if the Padres were going to win, they obviously are going to have Manny Machado and their starting pitching going for them. But they're going to need that offense from the bottom half. Like got in, in game, or wow, excuse me, in the Mets series, they had it from the bottom part of that lineup. They had it from Nola, they had it from Profar, and they had it from Hassan Kim. The Dodgers series, kind of that whole lineup was going. Jake Cronenworth had a huge hit. It kind of like put the nail in the coffin for the Dodgers season. And I think he's going to do it again this series. I think given a matchup. I don't really think Nola or Wheeler, but I think he can really punish Ranger Suarez, Noah Syndergaard. We're getting to like that lower tier of pitching, still respectable in their name, but when we're getting to like the people who are more prone to making mistakes, Jake Cornworth is going to punish those mistakes. So going into the series though, what what are you guys' thoughts? Like Tom, Stevs, you guys have the Phillies. Why do you got that? Um, I mean, if you look at the game one stats right now, um, the Phillies just one hit the, the San Diego Padres, and I can't believe I'm saying that. They allowed a one single hit the whole game. That's nine innings. This is a lineup that is very talented, um, <laughs> and I just I 
I was not expecting such pitching dominance from a team that is not necessarily known for pitching dominance. Um, if you can one hit the Padres with Wheeler, I think Nola's going to come back tomorrow or whenever, sorry, whenever the next game is um, and completely shut the door on this team. I, I don't, I don't see this being a sweep, but I do see the Phillies dominating the series. I'm tired of betting against this team. I bet against them twice now. Um, and I, I don't think I can do it again because they keep proving me wrong. Um, and I, I'm, I'm on the Phillies train now. I don't know. I, I think that, um, especially being in the NL West, I don't think I can root for the Padres. Um, and I just think Philly's got the upper hand just in every, in every aspect right now, especially with momentum. Um, so I got, I, I, I have the Padres, but, or I don't have the Padres, I have the Phillies, sorry. Um, but I just, I don't see the Padres um, pitching or bottom half of the lineup showing up. And they really, in, in game one at least, so again, a small sample size, they have not, they haven't, they didn't show up today. Um, and and along with Tom's point, the pitching staff, yeah, it's your ace and Zach Wheeler, and he's going to one hit you. But I think the Padres are a very big name team and Manny Machado and Juan Soto and, and, and Josh Bell. And after that, you need the spark plugs. And I don't think against these types of pitchers, and I, I, I don't think they're going to be able to, to do it. Yeah, so the Phillies have the really high-end starting pitching. And the thing that looks really good is you got Wheeler and Nola. But here's the thing. So it's game one, game two, travel day. Three, four, five, six, seven. If this series were to go, you know, into five, six, seven, Wheeler and Nola got to throw five and six, which is definitely what you want on the mound. But the thing is, if it goes to seven, neither of them are really going to be available because you're not going to have that rest between five and six where Wheeler might be able to come out of the bullpen and give you, you know, two or three innings. You got to win with depth depth in this series. And I think that's where the Padres have it over the Phillies. We saw tonight, like when the Phillies are right, the Phillies are right. It's difficult to beat them. But when you've got Darvish, Musgrove, and Snell with possibly some, you know, contortion of, Mus or, excuse me, Mike Clevenger, Sean Manaya, and that bullpen, they can win. They can win the meat of that bread, that sandwich. It's just can they beat Wheeler and Nola the second time around. And I think they can. I think if you can take one of Wheeler or Nola each time, you're going to win this series. I have the Padres in seven for that matter. Yeah. Um, no, just, I mean, looking at it, I mean, the depth of the pitching, I, I, I think favors the, the Padres. I mean, yeah, you have, you know, two amazing pitchers so far this postseason and the season and um, Nola and Wheeler. But once you get past that, it's, you know, questionable. I mean, I know Zach Eflin has, you know, like in the bullpen has, you know, had some good outings, but can he do it again? You know, you have, say, Anthony Dominguez, you have um, Alvarado. Can those guys keep up, you know, what they've been doing? It's a huge question mark for me. And, um, you know, some of the lower names in this Padres lineup have been hitting um, well, Austin Nola, I think he was batting like 330 um, this postseason. You have Profar, who's leading off and has struggled today, but, you know, hasn't been bad, you know, at all this postseason. Um, so if Josh Bell can pick it up and some of those other guys can pick it up, I mean, I think they can really just wear out this Phillies team, and this Phillies um, bullpen. Um, I'm just... I like the Phillies in these first two games. I think if the Padres can sneak out um, game two at home against Nola, then I, I think you're, I mean, I think you're in a good spot, you know, because those games three and four are going to be tough. Who do you go with Yeah. Um, for the Phillies? And I, I think you can, you can hammer it out, possibly win five, five Padres and six though. Yeah. And this series is really going to be, who can show up more? And it sounds cliche. It sounds like, yeah, obviously every series should, could be like that. But you ha it's a pretty balanced series, to be honest. Like, both teams have their stars, and they also have their faults to their lineup. They both have good starting pitching, and both bullpens have been pretty solid throughout this postseason. But you can definitely see how they both collapse at a moment's notice. Like, 
Josh Hader has been disgusting since September. Like he's back to being Hader. What happens if he gets hit? End of a game, Josh Hader gets hit. What do you do? Honestly, this series is going to be really fun. I think it's going to be a lot more fun than Yankees Astros part three. So today we found out the Yankees will be the other contender in the championship series. At this point, though, the Astros should have a buy of the championship series. It could be who could play the Astros in the championship series. This is their sixth straight American League championship series. That Astros team is so good. What do you guys think about this? I mean, I think the Astros have proved everyone wrong. I can't, I can't say I have respect for what the Astros have done in the past, but what they continue to do, even after being busted for the stuff, even after, after being proved to have cheated, they're not doing it anymore, and they're still winning. So this is clearly a team with a lot of star power, even regardless. I don't, I don't see them having much trouble with the Yankees. Um, this is my World Series favorite. Um, the Yankees are very flaky. Um, I I will say just seeing the fact that they nearly lost the series to the Guardians. I'm not saying the Guardians are a bad team, but they are not at the same playing level as the as the Astros. If the Yankees want to even have a chance of winning the series, they're going to have to be legitimately flawless for four games in a row, uh, for however many games in a row you're going to need. In my opinion, the AL is the favorite to win the World Series. I feel like whoever comes out of the AL um, is is going to be the favorite. Um, obviously, the home field advantage, I think, too, right, in the, uh, in the World Series, who so come out of the AL. Um, it is weird, though, because it is home. It's, you know, it's higher seed, higher seed, lower seed, lower seed, lower seed, higher seed, higher seed. So when it gets to game six and game seven, it's going to be in Houston, which will be interesting. And I think if the Yankees, who will be my pick, if the Yankees come out of this, they have to win at least one in Houston. I think if they get if they if Houston takes both the games at home, I I, I can't see the Yankees winning. You know, with next four to six against this elite Astros team. And honestly, at this point, this Astros team's a dynasty. Yeah. Like, yeah. they might not have the rings to show for it, but it's a dynasty. Like, it's very similar to the Braves of the 1990s, where just no matter who you put on that team, they're going to be competitive. And they've pretty much made the World Series. They made it in 17. They lost in the CS in 18, made it in 19, almost made it in 20, missed out by a game, made it last year. And now they're back in the CS this year as the favorite. Um, I really like the Astros in the series. I think the Guardians were a really good team, but they really showed that the Yankees are a really incomplete roster. Um. Garrett Cole looks really, really good right now, which is something the Yankees fans want. Nestor Cortez has been good, but he's not going to be available into game until game three or four, which is he threw today. So yeah, game three. You got a fully rested Astros lineup, a fully rested Astros pitching rotation, and a fully rested Astros bullpen. That's not what I want. I don't want Verlander. He's got redemption. I don't want Valdez. I don't want McCullers. Like, that's a dangerous team. And Luis Garcia looked fantastic against the Mariners who couldn't hit in game three. But he went five innings in extra innings. Like, that's pretty good. I got to go with Jordan Alvarez for my guy. I can't let any of you take him from me. So that's why I'm putting him in now. Yeah, um, real quick. The Yankees rotation this series, I believe, they've already come out and said tie on game one. making. Game two, Cole. Game three probably would be Nestor. Game four, Sevi. Yeah. Severino. If anything, yeah. I would. Go, if anything, I'd go Severino tomorrow I'd night. Go, but yeah. Um. Game. <laughs> game. What would that be? Five. You would go. Tyone. Cole. T- yeah, Tyone, and then six. Tyone. Six, seven. You go. Um. 
cold. Um, I wouldn't go cold. Either, I would but... if if it got to it, I would go cold game. I would want cold to start game seven, and and because I wouldn't want any type of scenario where cold. I mean, it depends on if they're up or not. If they're up, I say you pitch cold games. Yeah, six. I, I I totally. But... I think you. I think you nail down one, two, three. Go. I, they've already said Tyone, so I guess Tyone, Cole. Um, Nesto, but after that, I think you probably based on the series. Hey, I, I think, um, I think Tyone and, um, Severino, I mean, if Tyone was lights out game one, then hey, why not go him, um, game four? But if he struggled, okay, well, let's go Severino, and then maybe game five, you do a bullpen game, and depending on, how, you know, I think he had to play it based on the series. So, Stubbs, your prediction? So, I, I have the Astros. Not surprising, but what might be surprising is I have them in seven games. I think these teams are a little more balanced than we give them credit for. Not so crazy where they're even like the the Phillies and the and the the Padres are, but I think the big thing for the Yankees if they want to be competitive in this is that their pitching staff needs to be able to pitch. And you know they have the, they have the starters, but they need those starters to pitch deep into the games and limit the the usage of the bullpen. Because I don't if if it falls into a bullpen type game, I don't think that's the game the Yankees are going to win. Um, uh, my pick for the series is Kyle Tucker. Okay, I think he's going to have a good. I think he's going to have a good series, and I'm excited to see him see him play. I like that pick too. Yeah, and then, like, I just drew out the Yankees lineup or pitching rotation. Just to get a look at it. You have Tyone game one, which probably means Severino game two. You have a rest mm-hmm. day. Tyone against. Yeah, it'd be Tyone, Tyone versus Verlander. Verlander. Yeah. Then you have Severino, who would be going against uh, Framber Valdez. You have Lance McCullers versus Garrett Cole. Probably Luis Garcia, if I had to guess, for game four. Uh, be against Nestor Cortez, both funky windups. And then we're probably back to the top of the lineup at Verlander, but you have to see where he's at. Um, but the Yankees would go Tyone, Severino, rest, Cole, Cortez, Tyone, question mark, he would be on four days rest. Severino would be on four days rest. But the thing with Cole for game seven is he's only on three days rest. So do you piggyback him with Nestor Cortez, mm-hmm. who would be on two days rest? No, I, I think Garrett Cole has to pitch game two. Um, he yeah. pitched, I believe, I Sunday. believe, well, well, I believe, yeah, he pitched, what was that? Two days ago. So Sunday. tomorrow would be, you know, it'd be game three. So, I mean, game four, would put him on four days rest. I think you can pull him out there, pitch him for game two. Um, I, I think, especially, I think if you go down one, nothing, I think you, you, you pitch Cole. I mean, I think if you take it, well, I don't know. I think either way, you had to go. You had to pitch Cole game too. You have to declare it next. He's going to be on such a schedule. Yeah. That I, like Severino was really good. Let's not forget that. Yeah. No. Um. But so is Cole. Cole has been worth that three hundred million dollar deal that he got this postseason so far. It was two amazing games against Cleveland. They won't push Cole. Think about it. He's going to be starting game three at home. Like that. It's got to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. might. Sound- Pick, but um, I'm going with I'm going with the Astros in five. I don't think that the Yankees. I I know they I think that the Yankees are more fraudulent than people think. I think they give them way too much credit. Um, you look at every single pitching matchup, and I think that the Astros have legitimately up the upper hand on every single one. Even in Game Three, postseason McCullers is different. You know, it it is it's a different pitcher. Lance McCullers in the postseason. I would say could even be better than Garrett Cole. I, I don't I don't see I don't see any of these pitching matchups, at least starter stars wise, being like like balanced in any way. And I think that the Astros bullpen has the upper hand as well. And I have my MVP being a guy that I really don't like in Yuli Gurriel. Um, he's not necessarily known for being a nice player, but he just hits in the playoffs. I mean, he's I think he's leading the team in he's leading in hits. He's leading an on base percentage and he's second in slugging. He just he hits well in the postseason. Uh, and this is just a guy that's been consistent throughout the postseason, unlike Jose Altuve, who is literally over 16 right now. Um, and I do not think that's easy to pick him. So I'm picking uh, Yuli Gurriel. 
Yeah. Um, well, but it's like I'm the only one picking the Yankees. I had the Yankees winning my uh, preseason World Series against the Padres. It's still alive. I, I have to continue it. Um, I don't know. I feel like – I also feel like, though, this Yankee – team has been shut down year after year after year by this Astros team um, in the CS. Um, so I think this is the year they break out. I said it at the beginning of the year, too. Uh, this is the year that they finally break through. I know people don't want it. Um, I also feel like they're not giving this Yankees team enough. Like Tom just said, they're so overrated. They're this or that. I don't think they're giving them a chance. I really think everybody's going to just go with the Astros. The Astros do look like a strong team. But this is one of the best pitching Yankees teams we've had in a while, I feel like. There's depth. This this, this Yankees team has depth that I don't think we've seen, you know, in a, in a while. Um, I mean, has who – I don't feel like there's been one, like, absolute dud in the bullpen who has not come out and, like – at least had one, you know. That's not the problem. Bad. There's only three, four guys in the bullpen right now. You only have Johnny Lasagna. You've got Clay Holmes. You got Wadi Peralta and Luis Lucha Ravino. Once you get past, like, say they got to throw a lot on one, like, say Tyone only goes three or four innings and they got to throw a lot game one, they're toast for game two. Yeah. Um, but I also feel like the offense is going to um, score a lot. And honestly, this is. Um, I was really thinking about my pick being one of the big dogs, um, <laughs> Stanton or Judge, um, but a guy that I think has to contribute his um, weight. They brought him in for a, re- for a reason. Has to be Anthony Rizzo. Yeah, I think he has to come in and start being Anthony Rizzo that we saw in that um, postseason with the Cubs, or you know, for the reason they brought him in. Um, so I think Rizzo will contribute, and he will ultimately take the uh, Yankees back to the uh, finals. When was the last time they in the finals? Oh, has it really been like... It's been since 2009. Oh, nine? Yeah. It's been over a decade. Yeah, I think they're going back. Okay. So there you have it. You have, you know, our predictions where I'm in, I'm really interested because it's either going to be a really interesting World Series or a I really don't care World Series. Like if the Yankees are in it, I'm rooting for the National League team. But the one thing I wanted to introduce was this idea of getting Stevs close. But like it gives idea. us all an opportunity. So the way this will work is if you can predict the World Series MVP, Ooh. the one announced by Fox, announced by MLB, if you can predict that, you will get five points. From right now. From right now. If you get it correct, the World Series MVP, not just the guy who's going to be good, if you get the MVP correct right now, you will get five points. I'll give you guys time to think. We can talk through it. I have to think about this because you have to really think like, okay, which teams are going to make the playoff or make the world series, excuse me, you know, because if you pick someone that's not going to make the world series, you know, then you're kind of SOL. You could take a really safe pick and be like, you know, if this team makes it, this is the guy that's going to be pretty good. But how I'm looking through it is like, all right, I've made my predictions. These are the teams that I have getting there of the two teams that I have, who are the guys who's like, this is my time to shine. This is the World Series. And for that matter, I am taking Manny Machado as your World Series MVP. Damn. Okay. Uh, oh. I will go next. Okay. Um, for me, it's I have obviously the Yankees winning it. Um, and I think, I mean, you look at who, the past couple World Series MVPs. I know when the Naps won it, it was Strasburg. Hey, I, I do have them pulled up. You want me to go run it back? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I have just, a point, just, I have a point from, on that. From, from 2019 to, to now. So, so, 2019, 20, 2020, so 2019 it was Strauss. Uh, 2020 was Corey Seager. And then 2021 it was Jorge Soler. But so if you go further back, right, 2018 when the Red Sox won, it was Steve Pierce. 2017 when the Astros won it, it was Springer. 
2016 Cubs, it was Zo- it was Ben Zobris, and then 2015 with the Royals, it was it was Salvador Perez. But if you look at those names, none of them are really that front and center. It's it's this is my team type of of player, right? It was it was kind of that secondary or, or third third player that you're like, yeah, they're they're an all star, they're a top guy, but they're not the guy. I, I agree, but I feel like all of those players by the CS was having a very, very good playoff run. No, I don't feel like any of those guys really they were kind of quiet and then in the Wood Series, they were boom. Solaire had that crazy good, you know, playoff run. Um, Strasbourg, he was steadily good, I feel like, right through the, you know, through the playoffs. Um, yeah. So I, with that being said, um, I'm going to go with Stanton, John Carlos Stanton. I feel like a lot of those guys also outfielders. Um, I mean, besides, you know, Salvi, um, a couple pitches in there, I feel like a lot of them are outfielders. Um, and I feel like power hitters. Um, I would go. I mean, it's not really a defined line like Stephen Pierce was. Ben Zobris is a utility man. Salvador Perez, a catcher. Corey Seager, a shortstop. Like it's kind of yeah. spread all over the place. It's not yeah. any one per any one position. Yeah, I think I'm recency biased. Yeah, well, within the last decade, it's been what uh, three outfielders, uh, two pitchers, and then. Uh, a catch, two catch, a catcher, a catcher, and then a first baseman and a third baseman, and then Ortiz was a DH. Yeah, so all over the place. It's 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 been pretty spread out. Tom, your pick. This is gonna sound like I just, just picked some names in the hat and then just chose one, but I'm going Jeremy Pena. I feel like this guy, I I feel like it's a sleeper pick. You could go Jordan, but. I just feel like something is up with, with Jeremy Pena. I feel like if he's got some sort of clutch gene to really clutch up and really get them to the ALCS, he has something going in him. Um, he's down the lineup, so he's going to have a lot of situations where there's going to be runners in scoring position, especially with the Astros lineup. Um, I think this is a guy who's going to who's gonna hit a lot. He's just going to be a good hitter. Uh, I don't know if he's going to make good plays in the field, but he's just going to mash for the whole, the whole rest of the postseason, I think. Uh, so I'm I am re- honestly right there with you, Tom. I think that that home run he hit against the Mariners is gonna spark something in him, and I think he is gonna have a good championship series against the Yankees, and I think he'll he'll continue it into the World Series. But I'm gonna take the guy you didn't pick, and I'm gonna go with you on Alvarez. Yeah, it's more on the safer side, but it it he's not. Yeah, he probably is the guy in in Houston, so it counteracts my my point, but. I, I think you can't bet against Jordan Alvarez, and I, and it's not something that I'm gonna do if if I want a chance at winning uh, or getting these points back that I missed. Then I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to to take that safe bet with Jordan. Yeah, the only reason I didn't pick Jordan was because I feel like the pitchers are gonna start giving him the Aaron Judge second half treatment. I don't think they're gonna pitch him anymore, which is gonna give more opportunity to the secondary bats in the lineup. So that's the only reason I didn't pick Jordan. All right. So there you have it. It's really spread out. Like, you know, we're going with some of us have the guys. All three of us have the guys. We have Machado, Alvarez, and Stanton. And then we got Jeremy Pena. I really like that pick because, you know, Jordan Alvarez don't get that RBI without Jeremy Pena getting on base, extending the inning. So Tom has Jeremy Pena, Stavs, Jordan Alvarez, Aiden, Giancarlo Stanton. And me, Manny Machado. So, are you guys looking forward to these CSs? Are you kind of like timid? How, how do you guys feel about them? I, I'm excited. Um, I don't know. I feel like a lot of fan bases are going to, the, the four left are big market. San Diego kind of, I feel like, lower. Um, New York, huge market, obviously. Um, Philly, huge market. I feel like I feel like them in a I feel like them in a World Series. You know, um, Philly against um, New York. 
I feel like that would be a battle of if they win, who's going to go crazier kind of thing. Um, I feel like those fan bases are known for getting um, crazy and rallied up over their teams. On many of Houston, Houston has shown um, that the building will rock, the building will shake, they're going to be electric. Um, so I, I think I think honestly it's it's a great matchup for the cities. Um, I feel like all four cities are right there wanting it. Yeah. Um. I I will say this now. I was a little discouraged seeing that the Braves and the Dodgers were in the playoffs once again. I I loved watching the young players and the elites play, but I I think this whole Cinderella story with Philadelphia and San Diego going far into the playoffs is, is something that a lot of fans want to see. You know, not even the fans of the teams. It just – people like seeing an underdog story. Um, it's entertaining to me. I wouldn't want to watch the same series over and over again. Cough, cough. Astros, Yankees, um, sixth time. Um, it's it's more entertaining to see these new faces and, you know, players that have a big name for themselves that haven't really gotten a chance to show them their true talent in the playoffs, like Manny Machado like Bryce Harper now because he left the Nats. You know, it's there's a lot of faces that really haven't gotten to see the playoffs that we're now seeing. Can they clutch up in the playoffs? It's a lot of fun to see that, even like Josh Hader. You know, it's it's cool. Yeah. Um, so, you got so, so I, I, I'm i excited. I'm excited for this because this, this whole expanded playoffs is really – it's thrown a wrench in the normal just kind of oh we see the same teams kind of getting to it and blah 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 whatever but you've you've seen teams that don't normally make noise make noise especially in the nl um and and it's exciting to see these i I put younger but but these guys that haven't had playoff success and haven't been in the playoffs much of of their career and it's it's great to see them be in, at, at this stage and and play trying to play at the the highest level you can play um at the highest level yeah and so as that wraps things up it's been a unique postseason there's been a, like the al has been quite predictable the nl on the other hand not at all predictable like i don't think anyone had the mets braves and dodgers not at all being a part of the championship series. With that said, thank you all for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and YouTube at 4A Podcast. We will see you with a recap of the championship series. Have a good one. Yeah.